is up, guys? Dashing here for episode 514 of Community Universe Mode and edition number 138 of Monday Night Fusion. We are here in the fallout of Ascendance 6. Took that cheeky little week break. Needed to rest my voice after such a amazing three-day event that I certainly hope that you all enjoyed. But here in CMB, it's all about looking to the future. We have still got a good couple of months left in this season. Still four more pay-per-views to come. And of course, the next pay-per-view is just two weeks away. It will fall on September 2nd. Battle Scars 4 is a Fusion exclusive pay-per-view. But tonight, guys, here on the Fallout episode, we have ourselves the third annual CMV Draft, the Superstar Shakeup, whatever you want to call it. And as you can see it right here, our first official draft from Genesis 2 Fusion, guys is none other than former Anarchy champion, the fallen angel, John Reed, who of course at Ascendant 6 put on an awesome matchup, but ultimately came up short against Crazy J. John Reed, in his entire near three years here at CMB, has never been a part of Monday Night Fusion. Has always been a Genesis guy, so now his career truly going to be starting anew and he takes on a man that he is very familiar with, the man who also came up short at Ascendant 6, but with a much bigger prize on the line. The pride of Scotland, Jacob Ziegler, was fighting for the World Championship against Harvey Hastings. And in Ziegler's own words earlier tonight, and in the minds of many in the CM Universe, Ziegler should have won that match. But he got cocky. Maybe he got nervous. He slipped up and Harvey Hastings was able to capitalize. The boyhood dream did not come true for Jacob Ziegler on the grandest stage of the ball. But earlier tonight, Ziegler came out here. He wore his heart on his sleeve. He said, if I can't have that world championship, then maybe I don't belong here on Monday Night Fusion. Fusion's been my home for my entire CMB career. But that World Championship, I've been chasing it for just as long. And the fact that I could not get the job done is really getting to me. But I know one more opportunity. I can become the champion. Jacob Ziegler pleading with General Manager Yuri Sokolov saying, give me one more chance. And Ziegler even going so far as to put his fusion career on the line. Ziegler saying, if I cannot beat Harvey Hastings at Battle Scars 4, I will retire from Monday Night Fusion. Yuri Sokolov, we all know he loves his unique opportunities. He said, Ziegler, you're on. And the match is official in two weeks. September the 2nd, Battle Scars 4. Jacob Ziegler has one more shot at Harvey Hastings of the World Championship. But if you cannot get the job done, Ziegler's fusion career will be over as we get a handshake between these two to start off the match. Great sportsmanship as always. So now Ziegler looks to build up as much momentum as he can over these next two weeks before we very well may see his last ever match as a member of the Fusion roster if Harvey is able to once again pull out that huge upset as he did at Ascendant 6. And of course, Harvey Hastings himself has been in a jolly old mood, but I think he knows as well as everybody else does that he got lucky at Ascendant 6. That's what General Manager Yuri Sokolov said. Harvey, of course, is in action tonight in our main event tag team action. He'll be teaming with Percy Simmons to take on PJ Moon and Schmitty as Ziegler delivers a hard slap across the face there of John Reed after shaking hands at the, the start of the bout. These two have fought before in the past. Just a couple of months ago, they fought on Genesis with Jacob Ziegler coming out the victor. John Reed now beginning his career anew as a member of the Monday Night Fusion roster. Big spine buster. As up to the top rope goes the pride of Scott. Looking to fly high early on. Will that pay off for him though? Sizing it, John Reed up from the top rope. Goes for a, a brain chop it was kind of looking like. Of course guys at Battle Scars 4 also in two weeks time. We know that. Fusion will have its chance at Money in the Bank. Six superstars will compete. Three have already been revealed on Twitter. 
a couple of days ago. Gentlemen, as Yuri Sokolov announcing that MF3, PJ Moon, and Pierre Thompson will be three of the six guys tonight. We will learn the other three that will join them throughout the show. I have the names right here in front of me. Those six competitors going to compete for the Money in the Bank contract. Of course, at Ascendant 6, we saw the Genesis Superstars compete for that very same opportunity with El Jefe earning the contract. Who on the Fusion side of things will get their shot at a World Championship match anytime, anywhere. They so choose to cash it in. Nice swanton bomb by John Reed. Both these men, former Anarchy champions. Another confirmed matchup, guys. We know that we're going to be getting tonight. Shea Hoxton. I can't tell you how excited I am that Hoxton is here in CMB. He'll be taking on a former Fusion Tag Team champion in Bloody Justice. And, of course, it was up in the air, guys. We knew that the trio's titles would be defended tonight. But a report a few days ago released that Randy Morton has been seriously injured. And we uh, here in CMB are not too sure how long he's going to be on the shelf, but it's not going to be anytime soon that Borton can return to action. So the question is, will the trio's title still be defended tonight? Xander, Slate, Reese Ortiz, will they go it alone, or will Yuri Sukolov allow them to pick a, a, a replacement for Randy Borton? Hook of the leg here by Jacob Ziegler goes to the pin after those mounted punches, only gets a two count, however. Now lining up the shot, guys, and Jacob Ziegler, the pride. That's exactly what happened at Ascendant 6, though. A lot of people think that that's one of the many reasons Jacob Ziegler lost to Harvey Hastings. Again, Ziegler botches his finishing maneuver. The pride before the fall did not fully connect. Now John Reed is able to recuperate. Maybe it's time for Jacob Ziegler to think of a new finishing maneuver because that one... Doesn't seem to be working out for him lately. Oh, and there's the super kick from John Reed attempted, but Jacob Ziegler very quick to see it coming. Another massive spy buster shades of his good friend, Hall of Famer, Paul Anderson. The knee to the back of the head, Jacob Ziegler now playing some games. Is this so smart though for the pride of Scott and coming off the biggest loss of his career these next two weeks very well may be his last as a member of the Fusion roster. Pump handle and neck breaker there by Ziegler. And now going to drag John Reed by arm and leg away from the ropes. Trying for a pinfall attempt. Hooks the leg. One, two, but only a two count. John Reed never count him out of a fight. Reed is hungry to get back on track after his defeat at the hands of Crazy J. And in unfamiliar territory, as I touched on, John Reed, his entire CV career, nearly three years he spent on Genesis, but in the draft, now been put on Fusion. A couple of clotheslines, snap, power slam. Ziegler looks to be in a bit of trouble right now. Tries for a takedown, but Ziegler counters with a DDT. The number one contender for the Undisputed Championship. Looking to prove to the world that he has got what it takes. And if he does not, he doesn't feel as though he belongs. Here on Monday Night Fusion. Charges does John Ray tries for a jumping cutter. Zigo though deflects it. Face first off that top turn buckle. Up to the set. Well, what is Ziegler doing here? Oh my God, Ziegler with an elevated dragon sleeper up on the ropes. John Reed's leg slailing, but Ziegler cannot keep that locked in lest he be disqualified via the referee's five count. Ziegler now turns to the fans, the fans that he feels as though he let down on the grandest stage of all. What's Ziegler going for here? Snap suplex. Looks like another snap vertical suplex. And now the botchplex! Botchplex by Ziegler. What a trio, but a lucky rope break for John Reed there. Not going to allow Ziegler to get the pin. Ziegler, though, stays right on the attack. John Reed in big trouble. Can Ziegler fully connect this time? No, this time John Reed reverses it. And a complete shot by the Fallen Angel. This might be John's best opportunity to get this victory here. 
his first night as a member of the Fusion roster to put down Ziggler. That would be huge. Countered though by Ziggler into a DDT. Now that the apron, Ziegler not a frequent flyer, but from time to time, yep, that senton splash of his off the springboard. Executed perfectly as always. Irish whip now into the corner. Irish whip to the opposite corner. Charges full force. Gets an elbow to the side of the head, though. Rocks him momentarily. That's exactly what John Reed needs to close in. Irish whip into the corner himself from behind. Up on the second turnbuckle. Pulls Ziegler's head through. Super kick by John Reed. And Ziegler goes completely limp. Like a wet spaghetti noodle. One. Only a one count, though. And here's a tweet, guys, from Matt Devious that says, No, he doesn't belong on Fusion. He's a failure of a man. That loss to an arm drag, he's just the shame of Scotland. The lord of choking when it comes to the world title. We'll see you on Genesis soon. Strong words from Matt Devious, who feels as though he should have been named the number one contender going into Battle Scars 4. Of course, Devious lost to Andrew Briggs at Ascendant 6, but then afterwards brutally attacked Briggs, not giving his former best friend very long to celebrate that huge moment in his career. But an elbow to the head by Jacob Ziegler, busting Reed wide open. Now Ziegler sees what might be his opportunity to end this match. Allowing that blood to rush to the head before dropping him. Vintage Ziegler single-armed. Vertical suplex there. Look at this. Full mount. Brutal shots. Elbows. Connecting flush. John Reed's not done just yet though. Pulls him overhead. But Ziegler is revving up. He needs this win. He needs this win for himself. Whipper snapper though by John Reed. Now Ziegler's down. John Reed circling but took too long. Double boots to the chest since John Reed flying back. Ziegler for a kick to the chest. John Reed catches him though. Dragon screw. Ziegler getting right back up. Not stand out for long. He knows if he gives John Reed this type of room to work. It is not going to go his way. Another air raid saw her neck breaker. And here's John Reed. Eyes on the prize. The fallen angel with the fall. John Reed looking to arrive on Monday Night Fusion with a blockbuster victory. One, two, no, but he cannot. Jacob Ziegler digs down deep. And John Reed now begins to wonder, what do I have to do? The, the past times they've fought, Jacob Ziegler has always come out as the winner. John Reed now going after that leg. Great strategy by Reed because if he takes out that leg of Jacob Ziegler, then he's not going to be able to connect with the pride before the fall. That heel kick of his, which he's already tried twice in this match, and twice it has not gone his way, charging full force, Sean Reed using Ziegler's momentum against him to chuck him overhead easy peasy guys, we also got a tweet here from PJ Moon who says, it's so nice on Fusion without Cross or Diamond it feels like Christmas came early time to celebrate with a W alongside Schmitty, Hastings, target acquired as Jacob Ziggler nails John Reed with a massive missile drop kick. One, two, nearly gets the three guys. Also a tweet from Harvey Hastings, world champion, says, you know what's amazing about Ziegler? When I beat you, Quinn won't be thinking about all the money you earned. She'll only know that she fell in love with an utter loser as Jacob Ziggler with that breathtaking moonsault of his. All these people coming out of the woodwork to target Jacob Ziegler. But Jacob Ziegler knows full well what is going to be on the line come Battle Scars 4 in two weeks, September 2nd. It is all or nothing for the pride of Scotland. Right now, he is putting on a clinic. 
with John Reed at the top of our show. Figure four heads is applied and John Reed can't find a way to escape. I'll tell Harvey Hastings something. He should probably be focused on that tag team match in tonight's main event. And he should cherish these precious couple of weeks he has with the World Championship. Because if you ask me, Jacob Ziegler is not going to leave Battle Scars 4 without that championship. Spinning neck breaker, but Ziegler, a very smart man, rolls to the outside, sensing that he's in trouble. Cannot be pinned or submitted out here. John Reed continues his attack, though. Jesus, what a clothesline by John on the outside of the ring. Twisting Ziegler inside out, but a trip up by Ziegler now. You see him holding his head. That's not a good sign. Ziegler not wanting to risk an injury, heading into the biggest matchup of his entire CMB career. Now he's going after John Reed's legs. Interesting strategy. Count of five here by referee. Murphy, these two better get back into the ring lest we get a count out finish in our opening contest, which would be a shame because it's been such a great match so far. John Reed gonna save us. Multiple punches to the back of the head. John Reed, Irish whip now into the corner. Coming up from behind. Gonna put Ziegler, oh wait a minute, what's he doing? Hook and ladder set up? Throwing Ziegler and Ziegler goes face first. Onto the top turnbuckle, a very complicated way of hitting a snake eyes. Ziegler comes too quickly, super kick out of nowhere. Ziegler ran right into that. His momentum meeting with John Reed's boot. Right up under the chin. Ziegler though is not a quitter. Here comes Vintage Ziegs. Tiger Bomb to the pin. One, two. Oh man, nearly gets it done. John Reed a bit quicker on that exchange with Ziegler fires back with a forearm smash. Twice in this match, Ziegler has attempted the pride before the fall. Twice John Reed has survived it. Dragged by arm and leg away from the ropes. John Reed setting up for something here, something that Jacob Ziegler might not be able to recover from. Elbow drop to the back of the head. To the pin, one, two. This match is getting closer and closer. John Reed, hands on his hips, breathing heavily, drenched in sweat, but he sees the light at the end of the tunnel. John Reed a second time, the fall. Ziegler perhaps having too much on his mind tonight. Will cost him here. Wow, that was, a, I didn't think that was gonna be a rope break. I was contemplating in my own head. But Murphy calls it as such. Rope break for Jacob Ziegler. Keeps him alive for what maybe might have been the finish. Now he gets busted open with a knee drop. And another knee drop by John Reed. The best matchup by far these two have had against each other. Will the same outcome remain though? Will Jacob Ziegler be the victor once more? Against the fall and injury, can John Reed capitalize on everything going on in Ziegler's career right now? Electric chair turned around into a sit-out powerbomb that shakes the entire ring, but still, it does not get the job done. And now Ziegler, they say the third time is the charm. Will that be so with the pride of Scotland? There it is. The pride before the fall finally hits its mark. One, two, three, and Jacob Ziegler is the winner. There's a predictions contest every pay-per-view. I think it's what he's asking. What a match to kick off the show. Welcome to Monday Night Fusion. John Reed. Once again feeling the sting of Jacob Ziegler's boot. Is Ziegler ready for Battle Scars 4 in two weeks? It is all or nothing for the pride of Scotland. Go big or go home. He either wins the world title or his fusion career is over. GG. I had the match unmuted the whole time and then I muted it when the match ended.
classic dashing. Is this one of the last times we will ever see Jacob Ziegler compete in or just in? <laughs> well, guys, up next it is one of the confirmed matches we knew we were going to be getting heading into the show tonight. It is the debut, and I am so ecstatic. Of Shea Hoxton here in CMV. Shea Hoxton arriving over Ascendance weekend. He was watching the show from his own skybox and seemed to have put everything he had on Jacob Ziegler. If you don't know Shea Hoxton, one of the biggest things you got to know is Hoxton is a betting man. He put a lot of money on Jacob Ziegler winning the world championship. And when Harvey Hastings won, Hoxton understandably wasn't too happy. And Hoxton promised that Harvey Hayes was going to pay for it costing him. Hoxton saying that he's going to take over Fusion bit by bit. And it starts to one-on-one -on -one with former Fusion Tag Team Champion Bloody Justice. Certainly not an easy task for Hoxton's first matchup here in CMB. But Hoxton is a former world champion. And uh, other promotions. And man, I just can't get over it. Having Hoxton in CMB. I cannot wait to see him in the ring right now. I don't have to wait much longer. Hello, Echo, you beautiful dove. Yes, you've only missed the first match, which Jacob Ziggler won, defeating John Reed, who is now a member of the Fusion roster. Of course, tonight is the draft that will continue this Saturday on Genesis. But the full... Uh, draft list will be posted on our website after the stream is over. Who's going from Fusion to Genesis, from Genesis to Fusion, and who's getting called up from NGW as well. What is up, QZ, my friend? I'm doing well. How are you? The fallout of Ascendant 6, Bloody Justice, was a part of the third annual Slick Memorial Battle Royal. Unfortunately... Did not get his ascendance moment, but the former Fusion Tag Team Champion is looking to soil Hoxton's debut here tonight. The NGW Tag Team Championship Tournament begins tomorrow on NGW. The first first round matchup. We also know, of course, tomorrow, TZ Mass will challenge Ryan Riley for the NGW Championship. Can't wait for that match, but here he comes, guys. Shea Hoxton in CMV equals money. Paul Devine going to put back on the blue mask. Shea Hoxton has proved himself around the world, but now he finds a new home in CMV, his target is Harvey Hastings. And Shea Hoxton saying, I'm not going to do what everybody else does. Just immediately call out the world champion. I'm going to take this show over. Make it mine, piece by piece. And prove to Harvey Hastings that I am going to be the face that runs the place. So we are ready to go. Hoxton going to prove to those who might not yet know who he is exactly what he can get done. And that wrestling ring as the bell rings. Here we go. Bloody Justice. You can immediately see right out of the gate. Bit of a bigger man. Not by much, though. And Shea Hoxton takes the early advantage, leading Bloody Justice up against those ropes, slingshotting Justice towards the center of the ring. Now picks him back up. Looking for a... Ooh! Mizzard of Oz there. You don't see those too often anymore. Modified neckbreaker now. Hoxton going to go behind for a massive dream streak. Cobra Clutch slam. Shea Hoxton all over Bloody Justice like a monkey on a cupcake. Out of the gate, Hoxton 
is not playing around. The former Fusion Tag Team Champion already in a bit of trouble, but Ivers whipped here by Hoxton now. Justice off the ropes, on the rebound, catches him with a kick to the shin. And now Hoxton looking like he's not too impressed with the opponent he's been given. Here in his CMV debut, goes for a stop, though Justice rolls out of the ring, catches his breath, comes right back in, and now here we go. Justice trying to build a comeback, chest bump on the rebound, and Hoxton's the quicker man. Unloading with a lethal combination here. Justice pulls him in for a front headlock, elbow to the back of the head. Justice shoots, punch to the chest, hook to the ribs, and a pendulum backbreaker. Bloody Justice is one of those guys you never truly know what's going through his head. Capable of putting on some absolute bangers, but been struggling as of late. Look at this power slam by Bloody Justice. Pulling Shea Hawks up to his knee, but a nice trip up by Hawks. The betting man putting everything on the table coming here to Monday Night Fusion. Where he looks to cement his legacy even further. Hoxton bringing Bloody Justice up over his shoulders. Not looking for anything pretty, I can tell you that much. Dropping Bloody Justice over the top rope, chest first, making it impossible for Justice to breathe. Now Hoxton goes to the ropes, and this is not going to end well. For Bloody Justice, springboard knee to the side of the head. By Hoxton right on the mark, and Hoxton always wanted to bend the rules in his favor. Choking out Bloody Justice, Hoxton's not done. Looking to seal the deal. Hoxton with a beautiful belly to back suplex to the pin. One, two, three, and Shay Hoxton just like that has arrived to Monday Night Fusion. Shay Hoxton just about dominating Bloody Justice here in his CMB debut. Justice getting in little to no offense, but man, even though I like Bloody Justice, I got to admit, I'm elated. Shay Hoxton is in CMB. He's on Monday Night Fusion, and he is a man with a plan. That plan was expertly executed here tonight. Shea Hoxton, though, in the little time he's been here, already has a target on his back. We know that Voice of Indy returned earlier tonight. The former world champion who's been on the shelf for nearly a year. Voice of Indy saying that he's of the corruption backstage. And it had a little bit of an issue with Shea Hoxton, his world championship. Voice of Indy saying, Hoxton, while you're focused on a piece of metal, I've got a real goal in mind. And Vindy certainly taking exception to the fact that Hoxton says he's going to take over Monday Night Fusion. Boys, Vindy, guys, it does return to in-ring action tonight. The former world champion, very excited about that. But up next, we have got some more singles action. And this is certainly going to be uh, an interesting sight, guys. If you missed Ascendant 6 and that... Light heavyweight championship ladder match, of course, Brandon Rain was a part of after not coming out the winner. It seemed as though Rain snapped. He saw that as his last bastion of hope to keep the Black Gale at bay. And after not being able to get the job done on the grandest stage of them all, Rain snapped. Went absolutely mental. And this isn't Brandon Rain. I don't even believe this is the Black Gale. This is something new. But the former two-time Rising Star champion is in action, whatever he may be now. We're going to see if he can try to get back on track. As he takes on Mason Red, a local talent looking to prove his worth. Part of a new superstar initiative. CMB releasing a statement saying they're going to give... More local talent, more indie stars, an opportunity here in CMB. 
Well, Mason Red certainly knows how to strut his stuff. Something tells me, though, this is like feeding a mouse to the python. Mason Red does not know what he is getting into. Definitely seems excited, and why wouldn't he be? What an opportunity for the young Mason Red. And here he comes, guys. I don't know that I can call him Brandon Rain anymore. I don't know that I can call him Brandon Rain. I, I don't know what to call this, this man. And look at him, guys. No longer bearing that paint on his chest and face. The paint, he said, kept the black hill at bay and not even wearing an attire. Stripped completely bare. Well, Brandon Rain made a, a name for himself this season by really connecting with the Sea of Universe, battling alcoholism and becoming sober, but we know he's relapsed. This is honestly eerie. I don't know that this man should even be out here right now. So here we go, guys. Mason Red with a huge opportunity. If he wins this match, he will receive a CMB contract. That's only if he wins, though. And against this thing, I don't know if that's going to be possible. Well, I guess for the sake of having to call him something, I'll refer to him as Brandon Rain. But make no mistakes about it, this is not Brandon Rain. Big time brain buster straight out of the gate as now he goes up to the second turnbuckle and a Phoenix Splash! I know we thought that maybe as the Black Gale, Brandon Rain was at his strongest. At least that's how many people in the CM Universe felt. You know, that's when he won the, the Rising Star Championship twice. That's when he was putting on those instant classics, great matches with the likes of RGP. As Brandon Rain, he just didn't seem able to cut it. The multiple opportunities at the late heavyweight championship all passing him by. Mason Red trying to fight back here. Forearm smash to the chest, though. Irish whip into the corner. Now slowly approaches the man formerly known as Brandon Rain. Irish whip into the corner, charges full force. Red. Some hardcore parkour running up his chest. Mason Red now lean up against the ropes. Not a place to do. Oh my God. Forearm smash to the side of the head. Brandon Ring charges. Rebounding. Suicide dive. To Mason Red. And that's not all either. Now using his own head as a battering ram. Trying to crack Red's skull open. Mason Red had absolutely no idea what he was getting into here. Jumping Larry and a kip up. Mason Red desperately trying to look for refuge as he slides back into the ring, but he's not going to find it. Brandon Rain waiting for him with a debilitating pile driver. Mason Red completely out of it. Brandon Rain has him right where he wants him. Skull cracking, spinning back fist there. Jesus. And now to the apron. Used to call this the blackout. Used to call it the raindrop. Now we'll just call it a forearm smash. Right to the face. Cleaning Mason Red's clock. And so much for earning a CMB contract. One, two, three. Easy as that. 
I don't know, quite honestly, what we just witnessed, but this thing that is now inhabiting Brandon Rain's body, Mason Red, quite a night for him. Even though he doesn't earn a CMB contract, at least he gets a hit. <laughs> so now we're gonna have our what happens next. For, for Brandon Rain, for the Black Tail, whatever he's calling himself now, whatever he might be now. But we still have a great night of action to come, guys. Our main event going to future huge tag team action as we are going to see the world champion Harvey Hastings teaming with Percy Simmons to take on the team of PJ Moon and Schmitty. That is most definitely going to be a hell of a match. We still got more action throughout the night as well, guys. Don't forget to check out our website after the show because the draft is going to be coming your way. Who's going from Fusion to Genesis? Who's going from Genesis to Fusion? We already saw John Reed make his Fusion debut. Maybe we're going to get some call-ups from NGW as well, but we are getting ready for fourth match of the evening, guys, and I did just receive word from gentlemen Gentleman Yuri Suklov that the trio's title match is still on, and it is going to be coming our way up next. The Good Brothers Xander Slate and Reese Ortiz with Randy Borton out on injury have been given the opportunity to choose a fill-in for him, a replacement for Borton. Who will that replacement be, and who will they be defending the titles against? That is all a mystery. We'll have to wait to see. Up next, guys, looks like we're going to be having Chris Sullivan in action. He was also a part of that Light Heavyweight Championship ladder match at Ascendant 6. Slowly actually making a bold proclamation earlier tonight. He called out United States Champion Alistair Knox. And we know that next week, Alistair Knox will begin weekly open challenges for his United States Championship. With Chris Sullivan being the one to stake his claim, gentlemen, Jerry Suglove has agreed to give him that opportunity. So next week, Chris Sullivan will be the first man to answer Alistair Knox's open challenge for the United States Championship. But tonight... Look at the game, just a bit of momentum before the biggest match of his career. Part of the inaugural Trios Champions, two-time Trios Champion is Chris Sullivan. I don't think I recognize this, uh, <clears throat> this theme here. Who the hell? What? No, wait a minute. Do not tell me that is who I think that is. We already got Shay Hoxton in CMB, and now you got to be kidding me. The NGCW champion, ladies and gentlemen. That's Jason Spade here on Monday Night Fusion. What the hell is going on? Shay Hoxton, now Jason Spade. This is enormous. Holy shit. Jason, I never thought that I would see the day. The NGCW champion. Now this is gonna be a hell of a test for Chris Sullivan as he prepares for Alistair Knox next week. Incredible. This is what the fallout of Ascendant 6 is all about. Jason Spade. In CMV and in action. Right here, right now, Chris Sullivan making some last second preparations. Oh, this is the night of respect. Jason Spade is in foreign territory, gonna show some respect. 
to Solius. Now the referee rings the bell. We get a collar double tie up right out of the gate. Now grabs the arm to Spade, goes around behind. Soli quickly takes the advantage for himself. You can see he has a bit of a slight advantage. Looks like both men are about equal build, however. The same size, roughly, and Soli's got this, this arm bar locked in pretty nicely. Jason Spade can't seemingly escape. Pushes off, though, walks right to an elbow to the side of the head. I still get Leo. I'm saying that Jason Spade is here on Monday Night Fusion. Hatch suplex, and that's not all. This is the fourth match of the night dynamic, so you missed a good bit. See that Jason Spade is in the ring right now. Going one-on-one -on -one with Chris Sullivan. Brought up to a vertical base, Sully. Gonna try to fire back. Coming up next, guys, we know the trio's titles are going to be on the line with Randy Borton, though, out on injury. Xander Slate Resortees have been given the ability to choose a replacement. And who will they be defending the titles against? That is yet unknown as Sully with the half Irish backbreaker. Oh boy. Chris Sullivan looking to send Jason Spade packing in his debut. One, two. Oh my goodness. Spade nearly getting caught up early on. Mamma mia. I thought for a brief moment that might have been it. Yes, so far we know that John Reed has been drafted to Monday Night Fusion. The full list will be posted on our website immediately following the stream. Chrissy Spade is in the ring right now. Can you believe it? Battling Chris Sullivan nearly got caught up early on after Spade hit that uh, kind of spinning neckbreaker of his. But Jason Spade... Oh, man, look at this. Single on the hook, DDT. Vintage Spade to the pin. One, two. Oh, man. Close call, but not quite enough to get the job done. Spade does not allow that to deter him, however. Backs into the corner. I thought that was the name. I wasn't sure. Thank you, Chrissy. Bless. Now I know. Hook the leg. Chris Sullivan trying to catch Spade up here. <laughs> How come I just can't do what Michael Cole and say? He hit it. There it is. Out out of the apron. Chris Sullivan flies through the air. You know, this might be a big test for Chris Sullivan. This is a test for Jason Spade as well. Quite a first opponent to be thrown out. You, the inaugural and two-time trios champion. dashing had to happen now I actually really really am hoping and praying that these batteries last because I don't have any left after these two new ones I just put in forearm smash though forearm smash again nice little bit of a catchphrase as we call it here in CMB sling blade for the layman or the shout out if you want to go back far enough up on the top rope now in spade Looking to fly, coup de gras by Spade to the pin. One, two, three, and that does it for Jason Spade. Charges are even worse. Because what if the controller dies while I'm streaming? Then I have to charge it. Another huge debut here. Jason Spade arrives in CMB. Looked rough for him early on. I thought that Chris Sullivan might pull out a huge upset after hitting his corkscrew neckbreaker there. But Spade was able to come back, hitting the Lanzenberg lobotomy. That wasn't enough to put down Chris Sullivan, but a beautiful, right there's the Lanzenberg lobotomy from the top rope. A coup de gras from Spade was enough. Wired controller? That actually might, might not be a bad idea. 
I sit close enough that it wouldn't matter. Here's what did it. Look at that beautiful double boots right to the midsection. I still can't believe it. Jason Spade in CMV. And much like Shea Hoxton earlier tonight is victorious. What a night. 10 out of 10. I actually might look into getting a wire controller. That's a good idea, Tim. I thought of that. <laughs> uh, there's seven as usual. Seven as usual. We're going into our fifth right now where the trio's titles are about to be on the line, guys. We knew beforehand that the good... However... Randy Morton coming out of Ascendant 6. The reports, unfortunately, telling us that Morton is going to be out of action for a while. Suffering some pretty serious injuries at the hands of Brule in that tag team street fight at the show of shows. And allowed for the Good Brothers to pick a for Randy Morton. And they have gone with Kevin Silva, a man... That has been a part of their hashtag no confidence campaign. So I can't say that I'm very about the fact that they picked Kevin Silva, a former world tag team champion as well, to help them out here in retaining the trio's titles. Ah, <laughs> oh, Hoxton, you beautiful man. Missed your match. We're glad to have you nonetheless. Remember, of course, we still have our main event to come, guys. Huge tag team action. As world champion Harvey Hastings is going to be teaming up with Percy Simmons. That should make for an interesting pairing. They will be taking on PJ Moon and Schmitty. You know that you love loading screens, Topher. <laughs> well, we're on Monday Night Fusion episode 138, but do not forget to tune in tomorrow, guys, for NGW. It is going to be a great show because breaking news coming out earlier this week. Drake Dunn, the Rising Star Champion, has decided to cash in his Rising Star Championship, and it's going to be coming to Monday Night Fusion our first matchup for Battle Scars 4 in two weeks' time, September the 2nd. Made official, it will be Drake versus Tyson Cage for the Anarchy Championship. Guys, another huge draft pick. Tyson Cage and the Anarchy Championship are coming to Monday Night Fusion. Cage going to make his first defense of the Anarchy title against Drake Dunn at Battle Scars 4. But with the Rising Star Championship being vacated tomorrow night on NGW, a new champion will be crowned as Stevie Wizard will be taking on Anthony Hunt in a ladder match. And not only that, but TZ Mass finally gets his hands on Ryan Riley. And the NGW title will be up for grabs. And speaking of titles, the trio championship is about to be defended. And here comes the OG Dirty Heels, Xander Slate. The first time we've seen him in a while without his good brother at his side. Randy Borden out on injury. So it's up to Slate. And Race Ortiz with their chosen fill-in Kevin Silva to get the job done here in this one. Yes, and Tyson Cage, we also just learned, has been drafted to Monday Night Fusion with the Anarchy Championship in tow. So the Anarchy title once again coming to Monday Night Fusion. And of course, we know that as per the stipulation of their Ascendant 6 match, Chris Diamond lost to PJ Moon. Diamond and Rob Cross 
along with the light heavyweight title, are going to Genesis. And there, of course, is Ray Ortiz, who is the only one of the Good Brothers to have a good night over Ascendance weekend, defeating his ex-husband, Adam Scott, in a brutal match. And here comes their replacement for Randy Borton, guys, the Portuguese god of wrestling and a fellow hashtag no confidence purveyor in Kevin Silva. So Kevin Silva, you could say, while Randy Borton is out competing as the interim trios champion, Now Tyson Cage is coming to Monday Night Fusion with the Anarchy Championship. Set to defend it at Battle Scars 4 against Drake Dunn. And of course, guys, at Battle Scars 4, we also will see the Fusion Superstars, six of them, compete in a Money in the Bank ladder match. We found out on Twitter a couple days ago that MF3, PJ Moon, and Pierre Thompson would be three of the six competing guys. The other three going to be none other. Listen to this lineup. MLP, a former Money in the Bank winner, actually won Money in the Bank at last year's Battle Scars event. So MLP going to be the fourth. Alistair Knox, the CMB United States champion, the fifth and the last spot going to go to none other than the man that we saw debut here in Fusion at the top of the show, John Reed. Six big time picks by general manager Yuri Sukolov. MF3, MLP, Alistair Knox, John Reed, PJ Moon, and Pierre Thompson. Gonna be the sixth man to compete in Money in the Bank at Battle Scars 4. And look at this, another pick for Monday Night Fusion. It is a former two time Anarchy champion, Jaquan Shea. Coming back to Fusion and getting himself a Trios Championship shot. Who are going to be his partners, though, is, is my question. Jaquan Shea, of course, speaking of Money in the Bank, competed at a 7-6 in the Genesis Money in the Bank ladder match. I'm sure he's still feeling the effects of that. So who's Shaquan Shea going to be pairing up with here for this trio championship opportunity against the Good Brothers? <clears throat> oh, shit! Well, here's our first NGW call-up of the night. Jaded a shadow, ladies and gentlemen. A man who has been setting NGW on fire as of late, picking up some huge wins. Getting called up to CMB's flagship show and getting a trios championship shot in his debut as well. Doesn't get much better than that. So there's our first NGW call up. Obviously, General Manager Yuri Suklov has been impressed with Shadow's run as of late. <laughs> there are, believe it or not, there are championships on Monday Night Fusion. In fact, that's what he's competing for right here, right now. The trios taught us, which now we know before Ascendants were exclusively a part of Monday Night Fusion and now being able to compete on any show. Fusion, NGW, Genesis, any pay-per-view the trios titles can be defended on. So 
So who is going to be the partner of Jaquan Shea and Jaden Shadow? Oh, mama! Another NGW call-up! Former NGW champion, the Prophet J Money. Once again on the fusion stage. That's a hell of a team. Jaquan Chan, Jaden Shadow, and J Money. J Money is a mean mofo. That's just putting it lightly. Ruthless as they come. The former NGW champion looking to add another title to his resume. So here we go, guys. Trios Championship on the line. Xander Slate Resort Tees with a fill-in Kevin Silver for the injured Randy Morton against Jaquan Shea and NGW call-ups Jaden Shadow and Jay Money. Iris ripped right out of the gate by Shea. Pulls Xander Slate back into a neck breaker. Up into the seated position now. Up onto one knee. Jaquan Shea. Just looking at this team, gonna seem to me to be the leader. Certainly the more experienced, a former two-time Anarchy champion, CMB veteran, We're kicked to the midsection there. Quan Shea looks around, but wasted too much time. The veteran slate into a Northern Light suplex, bridge to pin, only gonna get a one count though. And Xander Slate and his tag team partner, Randy Morton, lost in that tag team street fight to Brule at Ascendant Six, a match so brutal that Randy Borton has been injured and we have no idea, no word from the doctors on how long Borton's going to be out of action. So that leaves Slate and Reese Ortiz having to recruit Kevin Silva to help them out and retaining at the titles here tonight. Mounted punches by the OG Dirty Heel. Irish whip now into the corner. Jaquan Shea comes up from behind, gets an elbow to the side of the head. Now tries for a vertical suplex, knee right down to the top of the head. Nice counter by Shea. Snapping. Woo! Mamma mia! Dragon suplex there takes out Xander Flush. Not wasting any time as Shea either. With the trios titles on the line, there ain't no room for beating around the bush. Jumping complete shot. Xander Slate though. Going to be quick to try for that hot tag. Jaquan Shea sees it coming, able to stop it. Who's going to try to make the tag to here? Jay Money. The hard-hitting son of a gun. Immediately comes in to taunt Xander Slate. Jay Money's a man who, once upon a time when he first debuted in CMB, competed for about a month on Fusion. That was before NGW was uh, brought back to life. And, and he nearly ended the career of Pierre Thompson. Put Thompson on the shelf for half a month with a nasty neck injury you do not want to get caught up in Jay Money's pile drivers he knows exactly how to drill an opponent out of their head just the right way to inflict that excruciating pain that's what made him former NGW champion what well, might make him the new trio champion after tonight brought up to his feet, hooked to the jaw, Reese Ortiz. And a spot of trouble right now, but a punch to the back of the head. Ortiz snaps two. Nice! Back suplex turned out into a power bomb. Ortiz wants a tag, gonna get it to Kevin Silva, matching a tire with the arena and all. Keep in mind, guys, Silva has not been drafted to Monday Night Fusion. Neither have Xander Slate and Reese Ortiz. The trio's titles are, be, are able now to be defended on any show. Fusion, NGW, Genesis, any pay-per-view as well. Kevin Silva, also a part of that Money in the Bank ladder match at Ascendant 6. 
tried for that super kick to the midsection. And here comes the pile drivers package variation there by the Prophet. I did go. German suplexing so far in this matchup, guys. The challengers, dare I say, have been dominating. So far, it is looking like we might get new trios champions. And, and, and remember that the Good Brothers just won the trios titles last week here on Fusion, defeating the BRC to do so. Breaks out of the submission hold, rings of Saturn trio of elbows by the Portuguese god of wrestling. Arm dragged out by Jay Money, not allowing Silva to find a bit of refuge. Can you imagine how embarrassed Slate and Ortiz will be if Kevin Silva is the reason they lose their trio's titles here? They'll never forgive themselves. Another pile driver. Tries for a stomp, Silva gets out of the way just in the nick of time. Silva, a former world tag team champion. This is our tertiary main event, guys. Up next, Voice Vindy will be in action after nearly a year on the shelf due to an injury. The former world champion is back. KO! Forearm smash to the base of Silva's skull. Silva desperately wants a hot tag. He gets it. Just in the nick of time. Here comes the show. Big boot. Clothesline. Fell the wrong way, though. Ooh, nice basement dropkick. Now it's Jay Money who wants that hot tag. And he gets it. Here comes Jaden Shadow. The firecracker. Man who broke records at Ascendant 6. A part of the third annual Slick Memorial Battle Royal. Lasted the longest and made the most eliminations. Was in that ring for over 20 minutes. Eliminated seven other superstars. Xander Slate, though, takes him down flush with a nasty clothesline and now slate kind of pop up Samoan drop both Kevin Silva and Jay Money are down this is basically a standard tag match now oh slate with a hangman's face buster that is usually a setup for the clean slate to retain the titles there it is clean slate Jaden Shadow looking like he's in another dimension right now. One, two, but only a two count. Shadow just getting tagged in. Fortunately has enough to power out of that one on his own. Now it's going to try to figure out a way to come back into this as Jay Money and Kevin Silva are back up on their respective aprons. Single leg, high knee, Jaden Shadow rallying the support of the sea of the universe. We may have new trios champions. Shadow now, Butterfly DDT to the pin. That might be a rope break though. I believe Kevin Silva's trying to distract referee Murphy, trying to help out Slate a bit. But my prediction it was correct. Rope break called by Murphy. Xander Slate saved, but by the graces of the wrestling gods. Jaden Shadow, what's he trying to look for now? Oh, <laughs> Jordan, the opposite team. Holy shit! Rope assisted. This, I guess we got a name for this team. Team Pile Driver over here. Xander Slate's brain's getting scrambled. I think Jaden Shadow wants a tag, having a tough time trying to get to it though. Now Xander Slate's got his number. Irish whip back over to his team. Slowly approaches, but surely. Jaden Shadow's ready with the boots to the side of the head. Xander Slate escapes, stomp to the quad. Jaden Shadow escapes, stomp to the quad. Punch the back of head, elbow instead, reversal, best ensuing, 1999! Up in here on Fusion number 138. The trio's title's up for grabs, and Jaden Shadow with beautiful body scissors. Xander wants that hot tag again. Here we go, Reese is coming into play. <laughs> but Jaden catches him, pop up, you punch you. Right to the jaw. Now it's Jaden Shadow who tries for a Rings of Saturn. Reese Ortiz. Struggling to get out of this one, but he does. 
Shadow Rock, but the damage to Reese's arm might be done. Clothesline goes for a single leg drop kick. Jaded Shadow is ready for it. Forearm smash at a close range. Kick to the midsection. Going around behind. Somersault Cutter. I gotta say, Team Pile Driver is doing a hell of a job so far, working very well together. With Randy Borton missing, the Good Brothers are struggling. Hell of a kick! Good night, sweet Prince Jaden busted open. And now a massive power slam to the pin. One, two, three! And the Good Brothers retain the trio's titles. What an ending. Resort twos in the boots of the face, followed by maybe one of the most brutal power slams I have ever seen. Even without Randy Morton backing them up, the Good Brothers are still the trio's champions. Valiant effort by the challengers, and we got Jaquan Che, Jade and Shadow, and Jay Money on Fusion now. This is what did it. Helluva kicked the beginning of the end for Shadow. Reese Ortiz following that up with a power slam to put Shadow away. Oh, I am excited as well. <clears throat> it is co-main event time, my fine feathered friends. And Voice Vindy is back. It has been nearly a year. since. In fact, it was exactly one year ago that Voice Vindy debuted on this side of CMB attacking both Chris Andrews and Paul Devine. Would go on to win the world championship, but soon after dropping the title and suffering an injury at the same time has kept Voice Vindy put away without a peep for just about a year. But now he is back. We heard him speak earlier tonight targeting Shea Hoxton specifically. Voice Vindy taking exception to the fact that Shea Hoxton said he's going to make fusion to eradicate the corruption that is seeping through the crevices of fusion. And a bit missed that Shea Hoxton is coming seemingly out of nowhere and setting his sights in the World Championship. Vindy saying the world title is nothing but metal. You have to open your eyes, Hoxton. You have to realize what's really going on. But the real question is, what kind of condition is Voice Vindy going to be in? Because surely just about a year on the shelf, there's going to be some ring rust. But as a former global and undisputed champion, Vindy is never to be taken lightly. It is good to see Vindy back. I might not exactly be a fan of his in terms of his attitude, but Vindy always delivering some incredible performances, and I'm glad to have him back. Remember, Vindy survived an elimination chamber at Requiem to win the world title. That's how tough this guy is. You don't just walk out of an elimination chamber all fine and dandy. Ask anybody who's ever even been one, let alone the winners. Uh oh. Yes, this is Coleman event. Uh, Dash. And it looks like Moise Vindy is going to be taking on another fusion recruit. Draft from Genesis, former World Tag Team Champion, Luke Swanson. Now this could make for a good match. Another draft pick for CMB's flagship show. We, we actually just saw the man that Luke Swanson held the World Tag Team title with Kevin Silva in action.
Luke Swanson had a bit of a What's the word looking for? Not not the smoothest of runs on Genesis this season. And involved in multiple controversies revolving around the fact that he is a heavy user of the Mara Juana. And Castle Faye, the general manager of Genesis, took exception to that. They were butting heads for months on end. Don't know that Yuri Sukhlov is going to be more lenient so long as Swanson keeps it to himself. It doesn't hinder his performance. Swanson, an incredible competitor. Don't get it twisted. When he first debuted here in CNB, he was on a long winning streak. This is a huge chance for him without a shadow of a doubt to battle a former global and undisputed champion. And right out of the game, Swanson takes the early lead. Northern Lights suplex. <laughs> well, still the main event to come. World champion Harvey Hastings teams with Percy Simmons take on PJ Moon and his chosen partner in Schmitty. That should be a pretty awesome match with Battle Scars 4. Just two weeks away in Vindy with a massive STO. September the 2nd, one of the last pay-per-views this season for Fusion. Got Battle Scars 4, then Retaliation. For Genesis, only one more pay-per-view left this season, that being Anarchy Rules. And of course, NGW will be getting its first exclusive pay-per-view, which will be the night before Retaliation. Just to give you a rough outline, in two weeks is Battle Scars 4. That's September 2nd. Two weeks after that is Anarchy Rules, Genesis exclusive. Two weeks after that, on Saturday, will be... NGW departure and on Sunday we retaliation which is the season finale as well so it's really high time for the superstars on all brands to truly prove what they're worth before heading into the new season capture championship gold win big matches prove that they have what it takes to be future stars We already know at Battle Scars 4, Drake Dunn will be challenging Tyson Cage for the Anarchy Championship. The Money in the Bank ladder match will be coming our way. All six competitors revealed. MF3, MLP, Alistair Knox, John Reed, PJ Moon, and Pierre Thompson. And of course, Jacob Ziegler. It is all or nothing for the Pride of Scotland. He either wins the world title or he leaves Fusion forever when he challenges Harvey Hastings. Right now, Luke Swanson in control of Vindy as he nails him with a butterfly backbreaker to the pin. Not even a one count though. <laughs> Never forget forearm smash, Rock Swanson just a bit, but that's all Vindy needs to try to capitalize with a jab. Swanson's ready for him though, crosses the legs, looks like a fisherman's buster. kick to the back like I said with about a year on the shelf there's no way Vindy doesn't have a bit of ring rust and it's showing now as Swanson is completely in control not for long breaking out of that submission attempt chin lock with a snap air overhead punch to the back of the head and again I mean what a night it's already been we saw a Awesome matchup between John Reed and Jacob Ziegler, both Jay Hoxton and Jason Spade debuting with victories. Just saw the Good Brothers retain their trios titles. Oh, Vindy, wrong time to taunt, I think. Swanson just about back up to his feet. Oh, clotheslining Luke. Out of the ring, sending him down to the outside. Have a nice trip and catch you next fall. Break down the back, boys. Vindy has never been a man to shy away from breaking the rules in order to give him an edge in his matches. Swanson gonna throw the former world champion up against the security wall. Kick to the midsection, though, by Vindy. Charges, ooh, just missed that drop kick. That is unfortunate. Now Swanson able to take the lead because of it. Nope, stalled by Vindy, count of five here. Rushes right past Swanson, not wanting to risk the count out loss. Vindy not quick enough to see that kick to the midsection coming. However, forearm smash in the middle of the back. And again, as Vindy just bounces off the ropes.
<laughs> Kick to the guy. Oh, no. Luke Swanson setting up for the end. The trio of butterfly suplexes. Oh, Vindy popping right back to life like it ain't no thing but a chicken wang. The voice of the people trying desperately to find his edge. Irish whip to the corner, Vindy from behind. I think maybe looking for vindication. Luke was ready. Snap vertical suplex. And you know, Vindy does not want to get caught up in Swanson's brutal submission game, especially that octopus stretch of his. Oh, Vindy mean mugging. Yelling right in Swanson's face. That comes back to bite him though. Swanson, a former MMA competitor, not one to take that kind of shit lightly. Vindy trying to make Swanson his bitch there. Swanson ain't nobody's bitch though. Goes for a running back elbow. Swanson catches him up in an arm drag. Now the former World Tag Team Champion Northern Lights Suplex, no bridge to pin. Swanson instead sees his shot, his opportunity. Vindy to his feet, unaware of what's to come. This would be a colossal win for Luke Swanson. There it is, octopus stretch by Luke. Will Vindy be forced to submit and see him be returned? Will the ring rust be too much? Yes, it will. Luke Swanson knocking off voice Vindy. It seems like Vindy was not ready for the level of competition Swanson was going to throw at him. Well, Vindy tried to emasculate Luke Swanson rather than actually trying to beat him as we saw Vindy literally yell right in his face when he could have tried to capitalize. When Vindy tried to go for vindication, Luke Swanson was ready to counter. And that's what does it. Luke Swanson catching Vindy up. And that brutal octopus stretch of his. I mean, look at that. Wrenching the neck, pulling back on the arm. There's no escape. No choice but to tap out. Luke Swanson arrives on Monday Night Fusion with a colossal win. Well, Vindy's mission to eradicate the corruption here on Monday Night Fusion, not off to a great start. And now, guys, it is event time. Tag team action is coming our way. World champion Harvey Hastings pairs with the former longest reigning light heavyweight champion of all time, Percy Simmons, to take on PJ Moon and his chosen tag team partner in the Game Changer Schmidt. This match coming our way after... It had an interesting start because Harvey Hastings and Percy seemingly at back and forth. Then PJ Moon got involved and they seemingly formed an alliance attacking Unison. And Percy Simmons going out on a limb saying, you find yourself a partner, PJ. Take me and Harvey on. In the main event, and PJ Moon said, you gave him fam and certainly found himself quite the ally in Schmitty who has his own axe to grind with Percy Simmons. It was before tonight's show that Simmons brutally attacked Schmitty backstage. Simmons frustrated with losing his title at Ascendant 6 and in the way that he did, but also saying he graduated from that light. He is ready to rise to the top. And it seems like he's trying to make an example out of Schmitty. 
which is, uh, if you ask me, going to come back to Vada. Best of all time here in CFV against Paul Devon. And even though he came up short, Schmidt admitted that Paul Devon was the better man. But I am not going to quit. I'm going to keep getting better and better and better. And one day, Paul, one day I will defeat you. <laughs> Should get that like uh, Schmidt Arena back with the Shea Hoxton heads everywhere. Well, that battle scars four. We know that P. J. Moon is one of the six men set to compete in the Money in the Bank ladder match, and Moon certainly has bigs in mind, focused on Harvey Hastings and his World Championship. That is a straight ticket to the top for Moon. If he can capture that briefcase, cash it on Harvey Hastings anytime, anywhere for that title opportunity he feels as though he deserves. And there he is, the cream of the crop, the king of the cruiserweights, the man who defied the odds at Ascendant 6, endured a beating unlike any other I've ever seen, the hands of Jacob Ziegler, and still somehow found a way to retain his championship. The psychopath Harvey Hastings now has to do it again in two weeks, September the 2nd, Battle Scars 4. And if he can, he'll never have to worry about Ziegler again. Because of course, if Ziegler loses, he will leave Monday Night Fusion. <laughs> Harvey Hayes has definitely proved that no matter your size you are capable of being the king of the mountain though Harvey Hastings certainly has used his fair share of shortcuts at the end of the day there's no denying he is the man to beat he is the face of Monday Night Fusion this is his yard Will it be for much longer, though? Harvey Hastings has court himself a lot of enemies. All chopping at the bit. To get their hands on that precious prize he has wrapped around his waist. Harvey Hastings teaming up with the man he... Just earlier this week was sending shots back and forth with on Twitter. But coming together, the hatred of their common enemy, PJ Moon. The longest rating light heavyweight champion of all time. Percy Simmons lost his title out of sending six in that eight-man ladder match. But Simmons says, it doesn't matter. I did all I could for that championship. I made it something. Now as it falls back into obscurity, it is time for me to take my place at the top where I belong. And a tweet here, guys, from Voice Vindy says, beaten but not done. I've seen enough things in my long lifetime to know that one loss doesn't mean anything for the future. And the future of fusion is me. Don't forget that, Haxton. Savage. And that does is at the top. Ain't no top up for the Bentley. The franchise, the gold-blooded face of change. Has a new goal in mind. And even though that goal is currently in the hands of his tag team partner, 
They've got to work together tonight. Oh, PJ Moon still coming down from the heavens. I mean, he is glorious. PJ Moon descending from where he believes he is, the top. The upper echelon of Monday Night Fusion. PJ Moon wants that world championship. And Money in the Bank is the exact opportunity that he needs to get there. That'd be so great. Just fell. He'd probably die, though, so it might not be that great. <laughs> and then Manwolf comes down from the rafters. So PJ Moon ready for action here on Monday Night Fusion in our main event. But before he gets to that ring, he ain't going to go jumping in with the Sharks. He's got some backup. In the shape of the game changer, former world champion. Coming off the best match of his career. Schmitty has got a bone to pick with PJ Moon, or not PJ Moon, with Percy Simmons, rather. I think PJ Moon didn't do that. And that's why he selected him to be his partner here. Nothing like immediate payback. I, I'm pretty sure Simmons thought he got away with murder. Wasn't planning on seeing Schmitty maybe for a couple of weeks, but there's nobody quite like Schmitty. You keep knocking him down, and he gets right back up. So here we go, Harvey Hastings and Percy Simmons taking on the team of PJ Moon and Schmitty as referee Murphy rings the bell and we get it on. Harvey and Moon start things off. This is exactly the opportunity that Moon wanted. Neckbreaker straight out of the gate, stomped out on the face to follow through. Now looks to bring him up to his feet, but instead gets a dragon scooter. Takes him down flush. Harvey immediately pops him right back up. Arm drag, though, to greet him. Ducks under and gets a clothesline. PJ Moon, of course, at Ascendant 6 inside of Hell in a Cell. Finally, able to rid himself of his arch rival in Chris Diamond, sending he and the light heavyweight champion Rob Cross over to Genesis. What a super kick that Harvey takes with a pinch of salt, firing right back with a sharp DDT off that kneeling position. Dragged by arm and leg. Where does Harvey Hastings want PJ here? Closer to his corner as he wants to tag in Simmons. Honestly, find it very interesting that Harvey Hastings and Percy Simmons are able to work together here because for the longest time, while Percy Simmons was light heavyweight champion, he was talking a lot of trash about Harvey Hastings, saying that his light heavyweight championship was the title on Fusion. It was the title to see and much more prestigious than Harvey in his world title. I think they obviously know that they don't like each other. They're not thinking they're going to come out of this match the best of friends. But they realize they can work together in this scenario to try and get this win here in tonight's main event as PG Moon Irish whips Simmons into the corner. Tag the shitty bit of teamwork here. What are we going to get? Double snapmare kicks to the chest in unison. That's not it. Mamma mia, wheelbarrow set on. What a team. Yes, please. That was beautiful. And now the game changer up that second circle tries for an elbow drop. Simmons moves out of the way just in the nick of time. Now going to make Schmitty pay for it. Scoop slam. Schmitty drops down behind, though. Neckbreaker floors him. And now Schmitty letting out a mighty roar. Echoing throughout the journey here on Monday Night Fusion just as Simmons gets back to his seat. 
Slammed right back down with that neck breaker. Now an elbow to the back of the head. Tries for the pin. Schmidt hoping it'll be enough early on to get the job done, but it will not. Simmons up at the count of one. Head is applied, and these vicious elbows getting through without any effort, like a hot knife through butter. Oh, no. Schmidt, if he gets the body scissors in, there it is. Rear naked choke applied by Schmidt. But Percy Simmons, he's studied the tapes. He's done his homework. Wow! He's got his foot on the rope. Simmons gonna try to cheat to win, but Percy not able to keep Schmidt down there. Can you imagine what a steal that would have been? Oh shit! Schmidt's pissed. Old school Schmidt. Dragged by arm and leg to the pin. Make this an early night for the Harvey Hastings there to save the day. PJ Moon not happy about that. Cut across the throat and down out of the knee. Hook to the jaw. Simmons from behind capitalizing on the distraction. Full Nelson reverse STO. Simmons is ready for Schwitty, but Schwitty just a little bit quicker. Trying to get PJ Moon back into the mix. Maybe no Irish over to the Harvey. Charges, gets an elbow straight to the side of the head. Hastings trying to give Simmons a bit of room to work it up. Eat defeat. Schmidt gonna get lost in the woods as Simmons thought maybe he was gonna try to go for a tag, but instead he's, I don't know what he's trying to do over there in the corner. Maybe trying to wake himself up, snap back to reality. Oops, there goes gravity. He gave Schmidt too much time. The greatest professional wrestler on the planet today. Stats back to personally gonna jump past Schmidt for a hot tag to Harvey. Tag to PJ Moon instead. Moon enters the fray, going for the legs. Oh boy, modified STF. Percy Simmons getting caught up in all kinds of submissions tonight. Oh shit, out of nowhere! Wheelbarrow Bulldog by Simmons. Catching Moon off guard. Maybe it's that surprise I can give him down for the three. Oh, just about. Millisecond more, we'd have our winners declared. Backflip though by Simmons, not letting it deter him. Iris went to the corner instead. Simmons charges, chucks P.J. Moon down, up to the top rope, where's Simmons going? Sink time, P.J. Moon right back up though, ducks the clothesline, cross body, P.J. Moon right back up, will stay down, and again, again, we're a bulldog by the face of change. P.J. Moon is laid out. Simmons is fueling himself right now. Moon's gotta do something, he's gotta do something real quick to turn this around. Lost in the woods. But Moon is not one to quit so easily. Up to his feet. Jawbreaker goes for a high kick. Simmons caught it though. Turn around and it reverses the reversal to reverse the reversal. Hot tag over Simmons. Can he get it? Nearly. Not able to get there though. And now Moon on the attack. The chaos kick. Right on the button. Harvey again gonna have to try to help out Simmons, and he does. And that draws the ire of Schmitty, though. War breaking out in the ring. Simmons and PJ Moon are the legal men, though. Oh, there goes Schmitty into frame. As PJ Moon gets taken out with a back suplex face buster. And now with Schmitty down, Moon has nobody to help him. Harvey Hastings making sure of that. Third time, wheelbarrow face buster, Moon busted open. Wants to make absolutely sure Moon does not get lucky with a rope break. Harvey staying on top of Schmitty here ringside. One, two. Still not enough. Harvey just continuing to attack Schmitty out here, but Schmitty finally finds himself an opening, running back to his corner so Moon can make that tag. Oh my God, Percy Simmons on another level tonight, though. Eat defeat. And that might be exactly what PJ and Schmidt are eating here tonight. If they don't get their shit together real quick, Moon needs a tag. What a cheeky reversal. Power bomb catches Simmons right there's the tag, Moon. 
What is he doing? Moon wants to prove himself. Moon wants to prove that he can get it done himself. Discus knee. Thrown overhead. Percy Simmons, though. Oh, I forgot Moon was bleeding. Dripping out of that. I was worried about this. I have no batteries left. Please last. Please. Come on, come on, come on, you can do it. I believe in you. Mix and match and batteries here. I actually buy my batteries at the local Dollar Tree. I'll let you know. That's why they only last like two hours. <laughs> Look, I'm not, I'm balling on a budget over here, all right? I don't have the kind of money to buy Walmart batteries. What do you think I am? I'm a Dollar Tree guy. Yeah, I'm definitely going to try to find that wired controller, though. That seems like a good idea. Oh, look at PJ go. Trip up another modified STF. Simmons finds a way to Brett Fold. That was quite the elbow to the face. Mamma Mia. Sleeping on his feet. And a third time, I believe, PJ Moon eats the boot of Simmons. Hey, there I am. I'm just mixing and matching old dead batteries now, hoping there's enough juice combined between them that we can just finish this last match. Of course, it has to die in the last match. 450 splash by Harvey Hastings. I think the time that I, uh, well, I spilled my Mountain Dew over here, so I had to go grab a new one real quick, you know? I think Percy hit two more. Oh, those fucking Wilbur Bulldogs still not enough. Now Harvey Hastings it off the tag and Percy Simmons watching from the apron as PJ Moon gets off an El Jefe homage with the hook, line, and sinker. Face full of blood. Chaos kick yet. To the pit and PJ can defeat the world champion. One, 
two. Oh, so close, but no. Moon. Moon giving no fucks. Script out the window. Chaos kick numero dos. Hooks the leg again. One, two. Oh, but what might have been it? Percy Simmons breaks up before he was sleeping out there. Simmons wants a tag to shoot it. This is the smartest tag ever made. Oh, boy. Come on, batteries. You could do it. You could do it. Oh, that teamwork. Harvey Hastings. Quick to fire off. Forearm smash. Jesus. These lethal kicks. Educated feet being put to good use by our world champion. And tags PJ Moon right back in. What a rest for PJ. Great tag team partner, Schmitty. Percy wants a hot tag. Harvey seems to not want anything to do with Simmons, though. I guess he's seen the way the match has been going. Now, oh my God, a third chaos kick. And watch out, Schmitty had his back turned, got knocked off the apron. And Percy's not going to be any help. One, two. Oh my God. These four guys will not lose. PJ Moon blows the kiss to Harvey Hastings. Educated feet to good use, I'd say. Harvey drops down, neck breaker. Yeah, Shorty was like, yeah, I don't really want to. Headshot now by a world champion, man. Every time PJ Moon is in a tag team match, he gets absolutely ripped apart. I think PJ should probably, from here on out, try to avoid tag team matches. They never seem to go well for him. Into the top rope, but PJ stirring. Hot tag to Schmitty. Perfect timing. Now Harvey's up top, like, huh? Eh? Schmitty's the legal man, though, still gets caught up. <laughs> now it's Schmitty who's going to take the bullet instead of Moon. But Schmitty has more resilience, I believe. More left in the tank. Maybe he can kick out of this Blitzkrieg. Or maybe not. Hook of the leg, one, two, three. Oh, wow. Oh. Talk about a close call, 2.9999. Nine, nine, nine. Moon back up onto the apron. I don't even know how he's standing right now. Dawn in that proverbial crimson mask. Should he, get a, should he mix this tag? Oh my God. <laughs> PJ Wood is not being given the chance to rest. Look at this teamwork, though. What, what even is this? Ow! Oh! Assisted bro kick. Harvey's like, let me get the fuck out of here real quick. In comes Simmons with a head full of steam. High kick, though. Catches the face of change off guard. I don't know what exactly Moon is trying to go for here. Oh. Up to the top rope, what a DDT! Spike and Percy right on top of his head, but PJ Moon, I'm not even sure he knows where he is right now. Enough wherewithal to get off that elbow drop as Harvey Hastings trying to get back up to his seat on the outside, spinning soul kick off the ropes. PJ Moon throws his full body weight right at Simmons' face. Dusted it off. Simmons wants PJ in the corner. PJ Moon's having none of it, neither here nor there. To the high rent district, not a place that Simmons wants to be. Counters in the boots to the chest, flies high. Lunatic clo clothesline there. Well, in his arms every which way. And I think this will be the fifth time that Percy has hit this wheelbarrow senton on PJ Moon in this match. If Schmitty does not, Schmitty shouldn't even make the save. PJ Moon is risking injury at this point. One, two, three. Harvey Hastings and Percy Simmons finally just edge out the win after Percy hits a fifth. I think it might have even been sixth. A wheelbarrow sent on there on Moon. I thought this might be it right here. Percy countering the...
Come on, batters. Five more minutes. Five more minutes. I am so sorry, guys. Such a great show. Tainted in the main event because of my batteries. Great main event nonetheless, though. And Harvey Hastings and Percy Simmons emerge as the victors. That was a war. Schmitty, not a very good tag team partner, I think is what we all learned there. But keep in mind, Schmitty was also suffering from the injuries he sustained at the hands of Simmons earlier tonight after Simmons attacked him backstage. So PJ Moon knew that Schmitty was not going to be 100% when choosing him as a tag team partner. So really, at the end of the day, might be on PJ Moon the way that this matchup went. Now I'm going to go buy myself that wired controller so that this never happens again. And just in case, going to get a lifetime supply of Dollar Tree batteries as well. Hello, Ralph. But thank you guys for joining me. As always, I got to do this fast. If you like what you saw, you want to see more, it will be tomorrow. We're going to give you Discord links to all of our social medias. Great show. Hoxton and Spade and CMB. Can't believe it. So ecstatic. And Battle Scar Swore is just two weeks away, September the 2nd. You are not going to want to miss it. So I will hopefully see you all tomorrow. If not, then I guess that I will just see you when I see you. Toodles.